That's resisted. There's no way that kills. Oh, we're done. The Smith Plays is a PokeTuber with over 100,000 subscribers, and that's not even mentioning his zombies or his Minecraft channels. I've been following Pat since I got my first Xbox when I was 12, and I became a Call of Duty Zombies fanatic. But now that I make Pokemon videos on the same website that he does, I thought I'd give his new ROM hack, Pokemon Crystal Legacy, a fair shot. This is how he describes his new ROM hack. Johto has masterpiece qualities, but there are so many small decisions that compound and stop it from reaching that potential. And the goal of this ROM hack is to make a version that reaches that potential, but still feels like the crystal you're familiar with. I think that sounds pretty sweet. With that being said, can I beat this brand new ROM hack using hardcore Nuzlocke rules, where once a Pokemon faints, it's dead forever, you can't use items from the bag in battle, and a whole bunch of other rules you can see on screen now? Let's find out. Oh, and Pat, if you're watching this, thanks for setting my YouTube dream in motion all those years ago. Okay, so I'm gonna like half blind this run. I'll look up Gym Leader and Elite Four teams just so I don't get blindsided, but I'm not gonna be looking up encounter tables. That being said, I meet my neighbor and get my first Pokemon from Professor Elm. I choose Chikorita since I'm gonna have some faith that Pat made bay leaves at least a little useful in this ROM hack. We can skip both the old man tutorial in Cherry Grove and the catching tutorial after visiting Mr. Pokemon. I hate when ROM hacks like force you to do this still, like I'm playing an alter version of Pokemon, of course I don't need a catching tutorial. With access to Pokeballs, we can grab some encounters now. Fennel the Centret from Route 29, Rock Salt the Geodude from Route 45, Chives the Caterpie from Route 30, who becomes a Metapod almost immediately, Vanilla the Mareep from Route 31, and Coriander the Zubat from the Dark Cave. We arrive in Violet City, home of the first gym and the Sprout Tower. Heading inside, everything still seems basically the same as Vanilla Crystal. No, no, Vanilla, I wasn't talking to you. We beat up the Elder, grab a Rattata named Ragwort, and it's time for Faulkner. He's got a Noctowl in this ROM hack instead of a Pidgeotto, which is frankly just a better choice. He's also got a level cap of 10 instead of 9, so Rock Salt can... Wait, does he not learn a Rock move before the gym? Okay, well, I guess Vanilla is going to have to do some heavy lifting. We head inside the gym and challenge Faulkner and his flying types to battle. Faulkner leads with Pidgey and I lead with Vanilla. Quick Attack does a little bit of damage, but a super effective Thundershock is enough to get a quick one-shot KO on Faulkner's lead Pokemon. Second up is his new ace, Noctowl. A tackle immediately gets a critical hit, which is awesome, as a Thundershock does a lot less than I thought it would. Well, this just got a little awkward. I swap into Rock Salt on a Growl, confirming my suspicions that this AI just wants to make my life as hard as possible. We trade a bunch of Light Tackles and Mud Slaps until Rock Salt is in crit range and Noctowl is still above half? What? Am I gonna wipe to f Faulkner? I bring in Chives on a Mud Slap that she's immune to. A Confusion does almost nothing as a Growl from Noctowl does literally nothing to Chives, who's a special attacker. We trade a Confusion for a Peck and then I swap into Coriander. A Gust brings Noctowl into the red, but since Coriander is in crit range, I need to get a little creative. I pivot through Rock Salt on the resisted peck, and then back into Chives on what I thought would be a Mud Slap, but it was a Gravel, so it does just as little. From here, Chives can outspeed and finish off Faulkner's new ace with a Confusion. That's the Zephyr Badge 1 and our first gym battle of Crystal Legacy in the books. Right after the gym, Professor Elm sends one of his goons to give us a mystery egg that we've got to hatch. My first piece of criticism is the lack of fast egg hatching. Like, I know Pat wanted to keep this as authentic and as true to the original as possible, but I don't think anyone is going to miss running around for like 5 minutes just to hatch an egg. We get our new Togepi named Cumin and then head towards Route 32, where I grab beneath the Ekans. We go through Union Cave, which just reminded me how much I love the color palette of Gen 2 Caves. It just looks so clean. I grab a Sand Shrew named Turmeric here and a Machop named Allspice on Route 33. In Azalea Town, it's time for one of the new changes, the Rocket Storyline. We've got a new named team member, Edo, and some new dialogue about Team Rocket's unorganized actions. We also actually caught a Slowpoke in Slowpoke Well, which is so great. I hate getting forced to run around from Zubats for like an hour to actually get the thing that the cave is named after. The next stop on our journey is the Azalea City Gym, and it's gym leader, Bugsy. Pat actually gave Bugsy some useful team members in Pinaco and Ladian. He keeps his ace Scyther and it makes his gym fight a lot more like Scyther versus my whole team versus an actual gym fight. We make some team changes as Vanilla evolves into a Flaffy, Fennel evolves into a Furret, and Bayleaf evolves into Bayleaf. With our team leveled up to the new cap of 16, it's time to challenge the bug type master, Bugsy. 
Bugsley leads with Pineco and I lead with Chives. A Sleep Powder hits on the first turn, making this a totally free fight. Two Confusions secure the KO even after Pineco woke up and used Harden. Second is Ladian. I swap into Rock Salt, expecting a Thunder Punch, but getting a Supersonic, forcing me to swap again, this time into Vanilla as Ladian hits a light Psybeam. It sets up a Reflect on the next turn, which makes Rock Salt a little useless for the rest of the fight. Thundershock does less than half here, but it does get the Paralysis. Our second Thundershock actually gets a crit, so Ladian doesn't get the chance to attack again before going down. Last for Bugsy is his iconic ace, Scyther. I'm feeling pretty good about Vanilla staying in here, so I use a Thundershock that actually gets another crit after a Fury Cutter just does some light damage. Scyther's held berry juice means it'll survive another, but that's okay since Scyther goes down to the red as Vanilla stays above half. After tanking one more Fury... Uh, shit, cut his base 60 power and bug type in this ROM hack by the way. My mental calcs really did not take that into consideration. Oops, sorry Vanilla. I bring Chives back in and she can pretty easily finish off Scyther with a confusion. With that, we've defeated Bugsy, securing the Hive badge and, unfortunately, getting our first death of the run. Before we can continue our journey, we've got to take on Silver again in front of the gate to the Ilex Forest. In Crystal Legacy, Silver has a Larvitar now, which is cool because I actually thought the Tyranitar line was introduced in Hoenn because you can literally never get them in Johto. We get through that fight no problem and get into Ilex Forest, where we grab a Paris named Macha. Is Macha a spice? I, I don't know. We travel through and find an Abra on Route 34. Chives is actually faster, so she can hit a Sleep Powder and then we can catch Lemon Pepper in a Great Ball. We get another free egg at the daycare, and you know what that means. Egg Hatching Simulator, baby. I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. I'm fast as fuck, boy. <laughs> yeah, I think that it should be a law that in every ROM hack, you have to have instant egg hatching. My time wasn't even worth it since I got an Iggly buff. With nothing else to do, it's time to take on the woman who's been haunting my nightmares since I was in grade school, Whitney and her normal types. Her Clefairy got a reworked moveset, getting Stab, Headbutt, and Encore, and she got a brand new Teddy Ursa with some solid coverage options in Metal Claw and Mud Slap. We navigate through the Clefairy shaped gym and challenge Whitney for our third gym badge of the run. Whitney leads with Clefairy and I lead with Allspice. A Karate Chop can't quite secure the KO, and then Clefairy just uses a Charm to drop our attack to minus two. That's not ideal since I want Allspice to secure some KOs later, so I swap into Rock Salt who also gets Charmed coming in. Since Clefairy is fairly low HP, I'm not worried about staying in here now, so after a Metronome rolls Swift for some light damage, a Rock Throw can bring down Whitney's lead Pokemon. Second is the new Teddy Ursa. I bring Allspice back in on a Metal Claw for around a quarter. From here, a super effective Karate Chop can secure a one-shot KO on Whitney's new Pokemon. The demon that is Miltank comes out last, and it's time to dodge some attracts. Or I can just use Rollout, I guess? Okay. Weird. One normal Karate Chop, plus a Focus Energy boosted Crit Karate Chop can take down the most infamous Gym Leader Pokemon in all of Johto. We've got the Plane Badge in our case, and it's almost time for the mid-game. Time to head towards Ecotik City. Remember, don't forget the Squirt Bottle P. P? Hey, what are you doing? Stop. You're forgetting the bot. <sighs> and he says, he says, dumb, dumb, dumb idiot. And I look at myself in the mirror and I say, dumb, dumb idiot. After backtracking, we can grab our encounters. Route 35 nets us a Yanma named Mustard. The National Park gets us a Nidoran female named Nutmeg. And on Route 36, we kidnap the Odd Tree as Time the Pseudo Wudo joins the team. Also, I accidentally ran into the trainer in the National Park, and Lemon Pepper slept for six turns. Unless I can't count. Editing P, is that right? On Route 37, we grab our first fire type of the run, Cayenne the Growlithe. We meet Bill in the Pokemon Center, giving us access to a free evolution later on if we want it. Another fire type joins the team right away, as I grab a Slugma named Chili in the Burnt Tower. We fight Silver again, but it wasn't too bad since once I got a good swap on his Quilava, we were good to go. After getting our first sighting of the legendary Suicune, all that's left is to take on Morty's ghost types. He got a new Mistrevis, which is actually really solid compared to Ghastly, and a new Stantler, which really helps his team, giving it a little more coverage and depth. Ghost is also a special type in this game, swapping with Dark, so Morty hits pretty hard now. After getting through the actual invisible path, it's time to challenge Morty for the 4th Johto League badge. Morty leads with Haunter and I lead with Lemon Pepper. 
Thanks to its part poison typing, a single super effective Psybeam can bring down Morty's lead in one shot. Second up is Stantler, Morty's first new team member. This thing has Hypnosis and Nightmare to get put to sleep for the free swap. Or it can go for Swift, but it did do really good damage because normal is physical in this game. Well, after another Psybeam, that's two Pokemon down. Third is the final new addition, Mistrevis. I swap into Bayleaves, who takes less than half from a Psywave. A Shadow Ball brings our starter to 12 HP before he gets off a Leech Seed for some passive damage and recovery. I swap into Time, who takes around a third from another Shadow Ball, plus gets the special defense drop. Great. Time is my top candidate for sacrifice in this battle, so I stay in to tank another Shadow Ball and another special defense drop for that matter, as a Rock Throw does solid damage. After a couple of pivots, Time pays the ultimate price to get Lemon Pepper back in for free. Thanks for your sacrifice, Odd Tree. Lemon Pepper can outspeed and finish off Mistrevis, and Morty's Ace Gengar comes in last. This thing suffers from the same problem as its pre-evolution Haunter, the part Poison type. Since Lemon Pepper is a speed demon, she can outspeed the fully evolved Gengar and connect with a super effective Psybeam for the one-shot KO. With that, the Pokemon with the best sprite in the game goes down, and we've won the Fog Badge. Four badges down, and we're officially in the mid-game. Johto has one of the most infamous mid-games of all time, and not in a good way. The level curve is terrible, so Pat's solution was dynamic level scaling. Yeah, a feature that should have been in Scarlet and Violet has been brought to a game that came out the year I was born. For anyone that doesn't know, dynamic level scaling changes the level of the team you're facing depending on how many badges you have. So for example, Chuck, Jasmine, and Price all have different teams based on what gym badge you're going for when you're facing them. So if your 5th badge is going to be Chuck, he has a certain team, but if you're going to take him on 6th, then he has a different team as well. I think that if the main series game wants to continue down this open world path that it seems like it wants to go, it needs dynamic level scaling. I'm going to face these guys in the normal order that I like to take them on in. So that's going to be Chuck first, and then Jasmine, and then Price. We travel to Route 38 and grab a Magnemite named Lime Zest, and then to Route 39 where we grab a Dudua named Dill. Both solid encounters for Chuck. Arriving in Olivine City, we're greeted by Silver, who's nice as always. Here, we can grab the Good Rod and the Strength HM. We trek through the floors of the lighthouse to trigger the Secret Potion quest, and now it's time to go to Cianwood. Or at least it would be if I remembered to get Surf. Back to Ekertigue we go. We take down the Kimono Girls, and now we've got HM3. While I'm here, I quickly travel through Route 42 to Mahogany Town, just so I can fly over when I'm done. I do get a Gligar named Garlic for my troubles though, so that's pretty nice. After getting back to Olivine, surfing down routes 40 and 41, where I KO'd both my encounters, yeah. No tentacle or horsey for me. We arrive in Sienwood City, home of the 5th gym badge and literally nothing else. I grab the medicine, but surfing back is boring, so it's time to take on Chuck for access to the move Fly. He gets a couple of new Pokemon just like Morty. Hidmontop won't be too much of a problem, but Sudowoodo is a little annoying with the rock typing. After moving these boulders, we challenge Chuck for the 5th gym badge of the run. Chuck leads with his new Hitmontop, and I lead with Lemon Pepper. A Psybeam can't quite secure the KO, leaving Hitmontop in the red as it fires off a Rolling Kick that leaves Lemon Pepper over half. One more Psybeam finishes off Chuck's lead as he sends out his Sudowoodo second. I swap into Garlic on the Feint Attack for some light damage, and then into Bay Leaves on a... Switch? Okay. Primeape comes out for Chuck. An Ice Punch does solid damage, but Bay Leaves gets the Reflect up doubling our team's defense. I swap into Coriander on the Ice Punch she should survive, but she gets frozen. Great. She also doesn't get the instant dethought, so we're kinda on the back foot here. I bring in Dill on another Ice Punch, but it gets a crit, seriously? I swap Lemon Pepper back in, who can take the special Ice Punch for some light damage. From here, she can outspeed and get the KO with another Psybeam. Chuck sends out his Sudowoodle again next. I swap back into Garlic on another light faint attack. A faint attack of our own does a bit of chip before a rock slide brings Garlic into crit range. I'm in an awkward spot here since I don't want to swap into Bayleaf since he's already taken some damage. I make the choice to sacrifice Coriander, which might not be the best play, but I use Crobat a lot and I want to keep using Dodrio. I bring in Bayleaves for free. From here, a couple of Mega Drains can keep our starter out of crit range until the last attack as he takes down Chuck's second new Pokemon of the battle. Last up is Chuck's ace, Polyrath. I swap into Lime Zest on a dynamic punch that missed. I'm assuming that Lime Zest can take at least one attack, but after landing a spark for a little over half, I'm proven very wrong. 
Yeah, I thought he had a little more defense than that. Lemon Pepper can come in and finish the job though, so with Polyrath defeated, we've won our fifth gym badge of the run. Losing Coriander and Lime Zest isn't amazing, but you'll be seeing both of them in my next video, so stay tuned. After the gym, we grab the Fly HM from Chuck's wife and fly back to Olivine to give the secret potion to Jasmine. Or at least, I thought I was going to. What do you mean, go get the medicine? I got it. It's right here. Oh, shit. I don't know what happened, but my key items pouch got corrupted. Maybe it was the ROM hack not liking me hacking in rare candies, but I'm not totally sure. I thought I was going to have to start all over, but then I made one last ditch attempt. I used PK Hacks instead of PK Hex, which is a save editor, which lets you do whatever you want, not just what's normally allowed. Check out this video from Drew. He knows way more about it than I do. I have Rock Salt hold a secret potion, and then when I reloaded the game, it actually worked. Like I was able to take that held item and I could give it to Jasmine. I thought that would completely break the game, but I'm going to take it. Before we move on, I do fly around and grab a couple of encounters. First, I actually catch my surfing encounter, which was a tentacruel named Icing Sugar. After that, I fly to Goldenrod and grab the free gift Eevee that I named Paprika. I'm still not committing to an Eevee illusion yet, so she's going to go in the box. With that, it's time to tackle Jasmine. Jasmine's team also got a rework, adding a Magneton, Skarmory, Corsola, and her new co-ace, Scizor, that's holding a focus band. We had a couple of big evolutions before the fight to help us out though, because Cayenne can evolve into Arcanine after buying a Firestone from Cyanwood, and Bayleaves evolves into a Meganium. We solved the easiest gym puzzle in the world, that being walking straight, and challenged Jasmine for our sixth gym badge. Jasmine leads with her new Skarmory, and I lead with Cayenne. Since this thing has pretty mid special bulk, a single flamethrower can secure a one shot KO. Second up is Corsola. I swap into Bay Leaves as Jasmine's singular not steel type sets up the rain. I don't want the rain up when I bring Cayenne back in later, so I just stall it with Synthesis and Leech Seed Chip until the rain stops and Bay Leaves can get the KO with Giga Drain. Third up is one of Jasmine's aces, Scizor. I swap into Cayenne as Scizor sets up an agility to plus two speed. Now it outspeeds me, but a Twin Needle does 22 damage, so Flamethrower can get an easy one-shot KO, not activating the Focus Band. Magneton comes out fourth, and I'm assuming because of Rain Dance, but a Flamethrower gets a one-shot pretty easily. Last up is Steelix, which is a little awkward. Since I want to get this KO with Icing Sugar, I can't just swap into a super effective Earthquake all willy-nilly. I brought Garlic for this exact reason. I swap him into the Earthquake that he's immune to, get some Chip, bring in Bay Leaves for some more Chip, and once Steelix is around half, I can bring in Icing Sugar on an Iron Tail that misses anyways. From here, a Surf can secure the KO on Jasmine's second ace, and we've won the Mineral Badge. That's 6 Johto Badges to go, and 1 left in the mid game. I fly back to Mahogany Town and head towards the Lake of Rage. I grab a Venomoth named Arrowroot and then take down the Red Gyarados. After that, a new character is introduced in the story, who hyperbeams a man instead of the champion of the region. I think that's probably a little better from a PR standpoint. Our team is a little over leveled for the rocket hideout, so I'm just going to skip over it all. The only thing of note is that we do catch one of the electrodes we were supposed to KO. Pumpkin Pie thankfully didn't blow up on me, and he's going to be really useful. With Team Rocket out of the way for like 10 minutes, it's time to take on Price. He got a new Cloyster, Sneasel, and Jinx, who are all pretty formidable in their own ways. With Allspice evolving into a Machamp, it's time to take on Price for our 7th gym badge of the run. Price leads with Cloyster and I lead with Pumpkin Pie. He sets up a light screen for a little bit of insurance as Cloyster sets up a layer of spikes. That's really inconvenient and I don't want any more of that, so a spark can get the K uh, or to leave it in the red? At least it just set up the rain. Before Pumpkin Pie can get the KO, Price swaps into Pile of Swine who's immune to the spark. Earthquake still hits Icing Sugar super effectively, so I have to pivot through Garlic to bait up Blizzard, and then into Icing Sugar safely. From there, a super effective Surf gets the one-shot KO. Price brings Cloyster back out second, but it's like 1 HP, so Icing Sugar just grabs that KO too. Third up is Sneasel. I swap into Allspice and a resisted Feint attack for light damage. Even after Sneasel outspeeds and sets up a Reflect, Allspice can still get the KO with a super effective Karate Chop. It wasn't even a crit, what a monster. Fourth up is Jinx. I swap into Cayenne on a Psychic that would have killed if it crit. I wasn't expecting that. I think I've got a free KO here, but Price swaps again, this time into Dugong. I don't know if Pat actually made any changes to the AI, but it seems like really good at switching now. 
The flamethrower that was supposed to take down Jinx did over half to Dugong. I swap into Pumpkin Pie, who can outspeed and get the KO with Spark on the next turn. Jinx is back out last, but Cayenne's a little too low to swap back in on a Psychic. So I decide to pivot through Garlic to Beta Blizzard and then go into Cayenne pretty safely. My plan was a little too optimistic though, since I immediately get punished as a crit Psychic brings down Garlic in one shot. That's so unlucky. Cayenne does come in for free and can finish off the battle with a super effective flamethrower. With Jinx down, we've won the Glacier Badge and the 7th Gym Battle of the Johto region. Whoa, we just got a phone call perfectly timed to the moment I walked out of the gym. Elm, you're one punctual guy. Time for Team Rocket. The story is a little reworked and I actually really like it now. Instead of a bunch of cosplayers pretending to be Team Rocket, we've got the remnants of the former evil team trying desperately to get the attention of their former leader. Little do they know that he doesn't want anything to do with them or Team Rocket and all their efforts are in vain. It's an interesting dynamic for the team and this dialogue from Archer and Giovanni is actually really solid. Pat, let's collab on a new ROM hack in a custom region with a real story. Hit me up. Anyways, Team Rocket down at Fine, I'll talk about it quick. Team Rocket still isn't super difficult, but the updated teams are much better. Like, Archer actually has a team now instead of like an unevolved hound door and a coughing, so that's pretty nice. We can access the west of Mahogany Town now, so on Route 44, we grab a Tangela named Oregano. Not super awesome without an evolution, so this is the last time you'll see her. The icy path nets us a swineub named Pepper and me like 15 minutes trying to figure out this ice puzzle. Yeah, do you know this is a kid's game? Blackthorn City home of the final gym and the most annoying one. Without access to infinite Ice Beam TMs like in the remix, Claire is a whole lot harder for us. With the addition of a Lapras to her team, we've got our work cut out for us. You know what's not gonna help at all with this? The Dawn fan that we caught outside of Blackthorn City named Montreal Steak. We're never gonna see him again. We finished this Mario level looking gym puzzle, and it's time to challenge Claire and her dragon types to battle. Claire leads with her first Dragonair, and I lead with Pepper, who's now a Piloswine. A flamethrower does around a third, but even with only the low base power Icy Wind, Pepper can still secure a one-shot KO on Claire's lead. Second is Gyarados. I swap into Mint on a waterfall for some light damage. Mint just wants a little bit of chip here, but after getting flinched twice in a row, she didn't accomplish anything. I swap into Pumpkin Pie, who immediately gets crit by a bite on the switch in. This isn't foreshadowing, right? Thankfully, our fall seasoning can outspeed and take down the four times weak to electric. It survives that? Pumpkin Pie gets hit hard by another bite, but it doesn't crit, so he lives to fight another day. Another spark finishes the job, and Claire's third Pokemon, Dragonair, comes out next. I swap back into Pepper on a Dragon Breath for some light damage, and then tank another to 40 HP before an Icy Wind can secure the KO on Claire's second Dragonair of the battle. Fourth up is Lapras. I swap into Allspice, who's literally here for this exact Pokemon, as he tanks a Surf for some okay damage. A single super effective Cross Chop is enough to KO Claire's new Pokemon. Her last Pokemon is the scariest one though, and that's her ace, Kingdra. Since Fairy type doesn't exist yet, this thing is only weak to dragon moves, which my team is really lacking. I decide to stay in to see how much damage Allspice can do, and after getting hit by a smoke screen and missing our first cross chop, a dragon breath doesn't do a whole lot, but our stab high crit rate cross chop does what it does best, gets a critical hit. That crit actually one shots Kingdra, bringing down Claire's ace in one shot. With that, we've won our... well... I guess we haven't gotten the badge yet, but that's our final gym battle of Johto in the books, leaving only the Pokemon League left to challenge. Kanto is calling my name, but before we can answer, we've gotta go get our badge. Yeah, Claire is being a stupid baby, so we've gotta go tell on her. Mom, I'm telling the truth! I am serious! Rising badge acquired. I grab a Magikarp in Blackthorn City, guaranteeing a Dratini named Cinnamon in the Dragon's Den. He'll be really helpful now that the Elite Four level cap is pushed up to 55. Before that, we've got to travel through routes 27, 26, and then Victory Road. I'm not going to spend too much time here since the encounters aren't going to be useful, the level cap is 55 so I've got a solid level advantage on everything, and Alakazam is broken. Victory Road is empty in this game, which I always thought was pretty funny, like Silver stomped everyone for us, like what a nice guy. Speaking of, I actually really like Silver's character arc now. He's changed from like some pointless villain in the originals to a trainer with some flaws that he learned to overcome while learning to treat his Pokemon like friends in the process. It's a really great lesson, especially for like a Pokemon game. With our last battle out of the way, we arrive at the Indigo Plateau, 
home of the Elite Four and the Champion. The entire roster got a facelift in Crystal Legacy, including some new Pokemon like Slowking, Quillflish, Heracross, and... Is that a f Zapdos? It looks like we're gonna have our work cut out for us, so we gotta build a pretty balanced team here. The Elite Four specializes in Psychic, Poison, Fighting, and Dark, so we've got some overlapping type matchups. Lemon Pepper is a must bring, since with Shadow Ball, he can sweep through Will, Koga, and probably Bruno too. To support him, I want Cinnamon, who evolved first into a Dragonair and then into a Dragonite. I'll also bring Bay Leaves for any Leech Seed Synthesis stall we might need. To round out the rest of the team, we'll grab Pumpkin Pie primarily for Lance's Gyarados and Aerodactyl, and Allspice for help with Karen's Umbreon and Houndoom. The last slot is kind of a toss-up, and it was between either Mint, Cayenne, or Pepper. Cayenne got kind of ruled out because his flamethrowers aren't really doing a whole lot into Karen and Lance, which is what we actually need him for. I then I ruled out Pepper because he doesn't have enough bulk to take any hits against Lance, while also being too slow to get off one of his super effective ice attacks. So that leaves us with our six team members. Can this team of six answer every challenge thrown at us? Let's find out. Our first battle is against Will and his psychic types. He leads with Girafferig, and I lead with Bay Leaves. Girafferig can't really touch Bay Leaves here because of his special bulk, so this one's just a stall. We set up a Leech Seed and a Light Screen, and then finish off Will's lead with a Giga Drain. Second up is Zatu. I swap into Lemon Pepper, but Zatu went for a Confuse Ray. I don't want to throw this run away thanks to a Confusion RNG, so I swap out into Mint to tank a Drill Peck. Mint stays in for a few turns trying to bait out a Confuse Ray, but it never happens for some reason. So after doing a little bit of damage with a few headbutts, we can bring Lemon Pepper back in as a Drill Peck does less than half. A super effective Shadow Ball can bring down Will's Ace from there. Third up is Espeon, but even though it has really solid stats, it can't stand up to a super effective Shadow Ball from Lemon Pepper. Fourth is Slowking. It's actually bulkier than I thought it was, surviving the Shadow Ball with around a quarter, but it just tried to set up an Amnesia, so we can just take it out with another Shadow Ball. Last up is the other Slowpoke evolution, Slowbro. This guy is less bulky than its royal counterpart, so a single Shadow Ball can bring it down. It did crit, but I don't really think it mattered. With Slowbro down, we've taken down our first Elite Four member, leaving us with only three left before our date with Champion Lance. The second Elite Four member is the former Kanto Gym Leader, Koga and his Poison types. He leads with Ariados, and I lead with Lemon Pepper. Pat did buff Ariados in Crystal Legacy, but it can't help it survive a super effective stab psychic from Lemon Pepper. Actually, I don't think buffs could help any of Koga's team members. Roll the clip. <laughs> <laughs> With Koga defeated, we're halfway through the Elite Four, but I promise they're not all going to be this easy. Third up is the fighting type master, Bruno. He leads with Hitmonchan, and I lead with Lemon Pepper. It can get off a little damage with a priority mock punch, but another stab, super effective psychic, gets the one shot KO. Second is Steelix, which Lemon Pepper actually can't deal with. I swap into Cinnamon just in case there was an earthquake, but a crunch doesn't do too much damage. A Surf can't quite secure the KO, so Steelix can get off a super effective Rock Slide that thankfully didn't crit, or that could have been devastating. Another Surf secures the KO on Bruno's second Pokemon, and his Ace Machamp comes out third. This should be a Rock Slide, so I pivot through Bay Leaves to resist it, and then swap into Lemon Pepper on the resisted Cross Chop that crit and KO'd my best Pokemon. That's actually insane. I, th I thought I played around the crit, but now here I am on the back foot. I gotta try to not let this snowball, so I bring in Mint. A Cross Chop does around a third as a Psychic just misses the KO. Cross Chop doesn't crit on the next turn, so another Psychic can bring down Lemon Pepper's Murderer. Fourth up is Heracross. I swap into Cinnamon to tank the resisted Megahorn, and then he can outspeed and connect with a four times super effective wing attack for the one shot KO. Bruno's last Pokemon is Hitmonlee. I swap back into Mint on a Body Slam that of course leaves him paralyzed. Mint is the most expendable member of the team here, so I risk a crit and try to get a KO with Psychic. A Body Slam connects and doesn't crit, meaning that a Psychic, we're gonna be fully paralyzed. Cool. Well, now I don't want to throw Mint away for literally nothing, so I swap into Bay Leaves on another Body Slam. Bay Leaves is actually really bulky, so using a Leech Sheet Synthesis Giga Drain combo, he can slowly stall out Hitmonlee and take it down. With that, we've beaten our third Elite Four member, but lost our best Pokemon right before the hardest fight. The last trainer in this Elite Four gauntlet is Karen and her Dark-types. Well, 
not exactly dark types, more like her favorite Pokemon, but she leads with Umbreon and I lead with Allspice. His cross chop connects first try and cleanly KOs the evolution in one shot. Second up is Gengar, which is the biggest problem. I was gonna get put to sleep on purpose and then swap into Lemon Pepper on a Dream Eater to get a KO, but now I can't. My new plan is to see how many leers I can get off before this thing puts me to sleep. Quick, how many leers do you think I got off? Put your answer in the comments. Okay, answers in? Great. The correct answer was A, 4. Yeah. Allspice is a beast. He broke through confusion on the first turn, then snapped out right away to dodge a hypnosis on the second, and then broke through confusion two more times, all while dodging hypnosises, single-handedly keeping us in this fight. What a monster. With Allspice asleep, I can swap into Cinnamon for free on a Dream Eater. From there, Cinnamon also dodges a hypnosis and gets a KO with Wing Attack. Third up is Murkrow. I swap into Pumpkin Pie on a resisted drill peck that does around a quarter. A spark on the next turn actually doesn't KO, which is surprising, as a faint attack in return would have killed if it crit. But we never get crit, right guys? Another spark finishes off Karen's third Pokemon. Fourth up is Vileplume. I swap back into Cinnamon on a 4 times resisted Giga Drain for 10 damage. A wing attack also misses the KO on Vileplume just like the spark missed on Murkrow. My super effective moves just seem to be coming up short today. Not a big deal though, since Cinnamon can tank another super light Giga Drain, and then finish off Vilebloom with another wing attack. Fifth up and last for Karen is her ace, Houndoom. It outspeeds and hits a crunch for 52 damage, leaving Cinnamon out of crit range and able to get off a surf that leaves Houndoom in the yellow. Oh wait, did I say out of crit range? I meant in crit range of what must have been a high roll. So that's awesome, rip Cinnamon. I gotta try to get through this somehow, so I swap into Allspice who's currently asleep. I'm hoping he gets an early wake up, but of course, he sleeps for two turns, forcing me to swap into Mint. Hey, you guys remember when he got paralyzed last time? Yeah, I forgot to cure that, but I'm sure that won't matter, right? <laughs> After tanking a super effective crunch to 38 HP, a Surf can- are you kidding? I cannot catch a break here. I'm getting punished at every turn possible. I make the choice to sack Allspice since he's not super useful in the rest of the Elite Four. I take this chance to freely swap into Pumpkin Pie. He's really fast, so he can outspeed and just miss the KO with Spark. <sighs> okay. I bring in Bayleaves. Thankfully, Houndoom just presses Reversal instead of Flamethrower, letting our starter finish off Houndoom. Our team got massacred, but hey, we won our final Elite Four battle. We've got our date with Lance next, but I have a feeling it's not gonna go so well. I won't waste your time here, so let's jump right into the battle with Lance. He leads with Gyarados, and I lead with Mint. She can basically one for one trade with Lance's lead, leaving our precious mint paralyzed with 6 HP. Lance's first Dragonite brings down our second last team member with an extreme speed. That leaves us with only the Pokemon we started our journey with, Bayleaves. This is a lost fight, but of course, the Dragonite that Lance had to send out was the Dragonite with Fire Blast, making this battle short and sweet. Two Fire Blasts, with the last one being a critical hit, because of course it is, ends our run at the hands of the champion of Johto. And with that, we've officially failed a Pokemon Crystal Legacy Hardcore Nuzlocke. Overall guys, this one was so much fun. I wouldn't call myself like a Gen 2 hater, but I'm definitely a Gen 4 kid. This was such a great way to make Johto function like a proper Pokemon region, without changing everything that makes Johto, Johto. Huge shout out to Pat or the Smith Plays for creating this with some super talented people. I'm going to put all the credits on the screen right now. This one was a lot of fun. So please guys, go play it yourself. I've left all the links in the description, plus a link to Pat's hour long video explaining the entire thing. If you want to see me try and tackle this challenge again, let me know in the comments or hit that like button guys. And with that being said, I've been Palm and Peas or P for short, and I'll see you next time. You made it this far? Okay, here's a teaser for the next video.